I'm doing this video. I'm not going to read the Bible, but I'm just going to kind of do a precursor or whatever you want to call it, a pre-warning to um, what I am, I am going to do. I don't think I'm going to do it today. I might. We'll see what happens. But there's a lot of scripture about Mystery Babylon, and it's very clear for me to see it now, more so than, you know, days of past, you know, because the meet and due season comes. When you're warning people, which is fulfilling the royal law, God does exactly what Yeshua told us this was going to happen. He said it was going to happen. He told us that he gives us the meet and due season if we watch. So those who are watching, which means to become a watchman, it's the, it's the calling in the last days. It is the, it's the high calling, you know, to fulfill the royal law. And what has happened in, and it, it like, I'll just tell you the, um, how do I put it? Well, when he says the whole world will be deceived, except for the very elect, that's true. So we're not necessarily warning because we think that they're going to listen. We warn them so that when it happens, they will know. You know, you start to, to be aware of that. Now, there's, um, because of their pride. Okay, what's the big, the, that the sin that leads to death is idolatry. Okay, so there's a, a very partic particular nation that is filled with idolatry. And they sell their nonsense to the four corners of the earth rather than sending the gospel to the four corners of the earth. So this is, this is their nature, okay? Because they've been given up to a strong delusion. That strong delusion is the drunkenness of pride. That's why drunkenness is an is a idiom for this, this pride that this particular nation's going to have. And I've talked about it many times uh, throughout the course of this last year, um, starting in Isaiah 28, you know, which is discussing, or it's a, the, you know, one of the places it's talking about the sixth seal. So the sixth seal, like I've said before, all of Revelation is quoting a boatload of prophecy. So there is this, the, the end days church right now absolutely despises prophecy. Now, they, they despise prophecy because it's against them and because it says they will. That's the way it works. That's the way the Bible works. The Bible foretells the future and the way people are going to behave. And it's because of their behavior that the destruction even comes. So God knows the, his creation and he wrote it in a book from the, he, from the beginning to the end. You know, so, and people just continue to do that which God says don't do over and over again. Don't go to the right, don't go to the left. So that's telling you don't be like Judah and don't be like the Christian church. Be in the middle, down the, na the narrow path. And he doesn't do these things. He doesn't say these things in vain, you know, but there's a remnant. And in the book of Amos, it's called the, the remnant of Joseph. So you better go look at what Joseph, with this remnant that's going to get saved, you better go behave like them. Because especially if you live in the United States of America, because that's who it's talking about. How do you know that? You study the Bible and you learn and you let the Holy Spirit teach you these things. That's the problem with people is they deny the power of the Holy Spirit. That's including the evil servants. The evil servants is a very real prophecy. You sit there and watch it every single day on Twitter. Just that's one place. Or you can go in the comments and on uh, all the false teachers and even some of the good good teachers if there's any hardly any out there because they're, they're not telling the truth. Remember, there's a group that's going to have no guile on their mouth. That's, you know, you're, they're not going to deceive people. Well, why did, why would you think that Yeshua tells you that, that they will call your name evil and separate themselves from you calling your name evil because they did the same thing to the prophets and he told you to enter into the work of the prophets. He told you loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind, all the law and the prophets hang on that. There's a whole group of people that can't even hear that you're not allowed to do the feasts until you return to the land. So what happens to those guys? Because, because they were given up to idolatry before, they just continued in, in, in the sacrifices. See, right now they should have mourning, lamenting and mourning and woe in their, in their hearts and trembling at his word. And that's not what they're doing. They've puffed themselves up thinking they got it made in the shade because they're, they're doing these things and they're making light of what's coming down, down the pipe. So...
and they won't warn their their neighbors. They won't they won't do it. They won't tell them the truth. They still have guile on their mouth. This is why they they still continue to tolerate that Jezebel spirit, as it says. You know, these are also those who are lukewarm. That's talking about the servants. So the Revelation two and three is really a warning to the northern kingdom uh, uh, overall, because this is when the lost sheep of the house of Israel return, which is going to be coming out of the United States of America. Once this, once they, they the the big the kickoff event is going to be the United States of America. That's what's going to happen, and that's why he's that's why God says I'm going to raise up watchmen to warn that prideful, wicked nation, and they're not going to listen. They won't, because pride equals stupidity. Stupidity, not intellect when it comes to the ways of the world intellect when it comes to the ways of God. So they only go so far. They only go so far. They go to the right or they go to the left. They don't stay down the middle. There's, there's are some that do though. And they learn. You see, I was trying to think of an example of, of the wickedness of people. Okay. So, um, in a, in a regular everyday kind of way. So let's say, you're working for your boss and he's a good guy and, and everybody loves him and he has this position available that's going to be very high paying and he he has he he gives all of his employees he's got 200 employees and then he he gives everybody the opportunity to take this position and you happen to be um not even very good at your job but you go sign your name to take on that position you already know that all these other guys are way better than you. But you go and you have the audacity to put your name down on that piece of paper to apply for the job because you you want that job even though you know you suck. That's the way people are. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what they're doing. But they still have the audacity because it's all about themselves, right? Now, um... A loyal employee would say, well, I already know that I'm not, I'm not the man for the job because, you know, Joe Blow is way better at this job than me. So you would bow out on it just because, because you are humble and, and, and you have discernment and you have understanding. You wouldn't, why would you put your name in a position that you are not worthy to be in and threaten everybody's job? Because if you make a bad decision, which you probably will because you're no good, you don't, you have no loyalty except for to yourself. And that's the way people are. That's what happens when you're filled with pride. You know, you know, it doesn't matter. All you care about is your own self and to achieve and to, to, that's covetousness. You know, you can't look in the mirror. That's why people, this is why both the Christian church, Judah, the evil servants, all of them, like it's all through the Bible. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to be like. You know, they won't, they won't look at, at things. There's guys out there, and I know these guys personally, right? They return to the drunkards of Ephraim. That's the pride. I mean, everything, this is the point I'm trying to make to you. In Mystery Babylon, which is the United States of America, all the prophecies that are taking place right now throughout Scripture are 100% being fulfilled, and God does not let his servants not see this. The meet and do season is watching these guys behave exactly the way scripture says. And guess what? They can't even hear it. And they do everything that they're told not to do. And then they smite their fellow servants. Thinking the Lord, Lord delays is coming. Things are just going to carry on as they go back and they start their covetous ways. They, they think that, you know, it's just going to continue on. There's no urgency. There's no, there's no <coughs> lamentation or mourning or woe. What does is, what is the whole prophecy say about the Ezekiel watchmen? That they're going to be, they're going to, they ate that little roll and it was sweet in their mouth, bitter in their belly. What does that mean? Well, it's sweet in your mouth when God is talking to you and showing you these things. But when you digest it, when you digest it, it's not very pleasant because you're trying to save people and you're watching even your own brothers, you know, do exactly what scripture says, and you have to accept it, you know, 
You have to because there's no you the, the, like this because people make light of the book. You know, so some of us don't do that. Some of us are sitting here reading it all the time. There's there's good brothers. There's brothers that are rising up. There was uh, one new, newer brother. He's starting to do videos now himself, which I'm very thankful he's doing that. And w that's the whole point. Let no man take your crown. And these evil servants, they let men take them all the time. You know why? Because they tolerate that woman Jezebel. Or they think that they're, they're, they're uh, rich and they're poor. Why are they poor? Because they won't lift a finger and tell the truth. You see, since Yeshua was here and he gave commandment to fulfill the royal law, which is part of that is to rebuke sharply the fables, especially out of Judah. Why would it say that in Titus chapter one, especially out of Judah, For, especially out of the circumcised? Why would it say that? Because the whole prophecy about the Chaldeans, okay? And the Chaldeans are doing exactly what the Bible says right now. And they're running Mystery Babylon. And they've got everybody deceived. That's why you have so many different denominations right now. The Chaldeans, the Babylonian way. You know, they wanted, they wanted the wisdom. And this is talking, this is a strict warning to Judah. So they're, they're, this is the higher ups. This is not talking about your average Joe. This is, but they're still deceived. The average Joes in Judah are still deceived by the guys at the top that are ruling all nations. That's what's going on. So they have, the, they have the Catholic Church under their thumb. They have the Christian Church under their thumb. And they have all the synagogues under their thumb. They got all the hospitals under their thumb. They got all the schools, everything. Everything under their thumb. And they're going to get destroyed. That's your mystery Babylon. That's why who runs Hollywood? You know, what, are they, what message are they sending out there? All the time, brainwashing you. It's propaganda, you know, and people aren't wise enough to see this stuff. And then those who see it, there's a lot of them. Remember when Yeshua says, many are called, okay? So he's giving, he's throwing a bone out there because he's poured out his spirit of grace and truth. I sit here every day watching the apostate church open their pie hole with just spewing out lies and have no understanding whatsoever, just like the book says. Exactly according to what the scriptures say. There's so many details that you just see it. So, you know, that's why I keep bringing up it throughout my videos. People, people want me to, I haven't made a video in a while. Well, I haven't made a video in a while because everything I've already said, there's what, four or 500 videos? I don't know. There's, there's that part of me that I've made thousands of videos in the last five years. Yeah, some of them are gone because I deleted my Twitter account because God told me no longer rebuke those people. Who was that? Who is he even talking to? A group of Judah that joined themselves with Judah and they're going in the wrong direction. So I stopped. I did as I was told. I didn't even know exactly what he was talking about, but I did it. And now I understand. I, I wash my hands, but I'm going to still keep warning the Christian church. You know, and I'll still keep talking about what Judah's doing, but whether they hear, whether they forbear. But when, I, when it comes to certain, the evil servants, like the watchman's job, if you pay attention closely to what the watchman's doing, first of all, God told you, I'm not going to do anything unless I first reveal it to my servants, the prophets. Yeshua already told us there is no, they've already did all the work, Okay. I send you to in, into uh, where they've already reaped or where they already sowed, you go and reap. That's what the commandment that he told us to do, right? That's why it says, blessed, blessed are those who obey the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yeshua, which is the spirit of prophecy. Therefore, you know what the prophets say. And then when you know what the prophets say, which I do, it's not a pretty message. It's terrifying to the, because the people don't want to listen. That's why it's bitter in the belly. You watch it literally happen every single day. So I say these things to you to put an urgency. What do you, like, if people don't get that grace is conviction. The conviction changes your heart and that's the spirit of God. It comes from him, not you. And that's why people, why it says, and uh, that's why Paul told us that they're going to deny the power. They'll trample the spirit of grace. 
<coughs> they don't want the conviction. You know what the evil servants are? I don't know how to explain this to you. Uh, uh, this, I'll do my best. They get the conviction, but they're, they're cowards. They're absolute cowards to tell the full truth. So they give you, you know, a little bit and then they pat themselves on the back. But really what they do is exactly what First Peter's talking about. This, here's what I'm going to tell you right now. I will be doing a video about Mystery Babylon with scripture. You're not going to like it. You're not going to like it. It is terrifying. You know, it's real. And the people are acting exactly like this. This is why right now you are seeing more people waking up in America than anywhere in the world. Why? Because they get the first shot and they get the big punishment. That's why. And they're acting exactly, exactly the way the Bible says. And you know, how is it, how is it possible, think like this, that a whole bunch of people all act the same way? Because the Bible isn't lying. They are given up to this spirit of covetousness and pride, envy and strife and malice. Cowards they are. They talk tough, but they're a bunch of wimps. That's what they are. I'm talking about the servants. Bunch of wimps. Only a very few are going to choose to do the work. Because they don't want to stand out. They're, they're cowards. They're, I've watched men be spoken to by the Holy Spirit, and then completely deny it. Completely deny what the Lord was showing that man doesn't do anything with it, except for tunes it way down and then starts to deceive a bunch of stupid women laden with sins, just like the Bible says. It happens right in front of your face. And, and because of pride, they can't see it happening. And they justify themselves and they think that they're the, the ones that are correct. Meanwhile, they're doing everything that scripture says not to do. It's just they don't know it's there. Why? Because they quench the spirit and deny prophecy. Prophecy. That's why. See, what's going on right now, I'll tell you in a nutshell about the, the people following the Torah. So-called. Okay? They're going to follow. They're going to they're gonna be following the Torah, okay? But they're not, they're going to plug their ears to the full instruction. That's what they're going to do. It, the prop, because the prophecy tells you that. And when you understand prophecy, see, they won't go into prophecy. They've, what they've done is they figured, oh, I'm going to keep the 10 commandments and I'm going to uh, uh, keep the rainbow covenant, blah, blah, blah. And that's good enough. Oh, I'm going to keep the feasts and all that stuff and whatever, right? That's what they're going to do. And then they think they're saved. That's what they do. They get hewn out. Because they don't bear the fruit. What's the fruit? Understanding prophecy. You have to understand the instructions of God, but it doesn't stop at the last chapter of Deuteronomy. And they don't even listen to Deuteronomy. They don't have the discernment to even see that it means the second instruction written to the, the, the return of Israel. And they're doing even the things, they're not listening to even the full instruction of God in the Torah. And all the prophets are talking about that too. So much about the prophets is actually relaying the information about the, the evil servants in the last days. Because they just, they won't go the distance. They won't bear the good fruit. And what's the good fruit? Getting to work and warning your fellow Americans. That's what it is. I'm not even American. And I'm shouting down to these people. Because God put... His love into my heart for you. That's what he did. But you want something else. Because I prick your pride. That's why. Because I'm not what you want to see. That's why. And that's even written in the scriptures as well. You know? There's a lot of punishment coming to the United States of America. Because of what a collective group of people did to the whole entire world, especially to God's word, especially. In fact, if they had any wisdom, they would be able to see that they're a fading flower. You know, you got to go to Genesis to understand from, what is it, uh, 37 to 51, I believe is the last chapter and study out 
this prophecy for Joseph to through Ephraim. Understand Ezekiel 37. Ephraim is really important to God. That's the remnant. That's the promise to Joseph. The promise to Joseph. But how many people are going to be saved out of that? A remnant. A remnant. That remnant has ears to hear. You see, here's the problem with people. When they read the book, when they read their Bible, they're not caring about what God wants. They, they just, they're filled with entitlement. You see this in every single church. That's why all your pastors and your synagogue um, teachers, your rabbis, either or, filled with pride, okay? They think they got it right. They don't. They don't got it right. Some of them uh, might, well, some of them in Judah should have it right. You know, you're not going to hear too much about them though, because the Bible tells you that the ones that know what they're talking about in the last days are going to be, are going to be very um, diverse. They're, they're going to be just a few here and there. That's, you know, and the reason why would, why would it be that way? Do you know why? Because everybody's too lazy to read their Bible. See, he wasn't joking. When he says, I'm slow to anger, okay? Well, this is even in, in what Peter's talking about. When he's slow to anger, it's what your ears are supposed to hear about that is that, and that he tarries for 2,000 years, your ears are supposed to hear that as well. And I don't care if you, if you whatever you want to say, um, whenever Yeshua died, Whatever year that was, 2,000 years later, he's going to be sitting on his throne. So do the calculations, and it's coming pretty close. Well, churches don't go apostate overnight. And now you're right at the end, whether it's one year or whether it's three years, who knows, right? Can't 100% say. Well, I'm pretty sure it's one year till the tribulation begins. One year. And know how many people are ready for this. Who's watching? Who's getting the meat in due season? Because that's the prophecy. When the end comes, blessed are those who are watching, being watchmen, that they get their meat in due season. And he doesn't come like a thief in the night to them. And that's why there's a lot of people. The reason why the evil servants go into tribulation is because that's the only thing that's going to cause those prideful people to repent. You know, that's why I bring up the Hosea, Hosea chapter 8, you can look it up yourself. Because there's been many altars in Ephraim, which is talking about Christmas and Easter, that they are going to not listen to the Torah, the instruction, they're not going to... They're not going to love God with all their heart, soul, and mind. They're only going to go so far, and they're going to—they're the unprofitable servants that said, "Oh, we've done the full duty." Ah, uh -uh, no, you didn't. <laughs> Woe to you, because you wouldn't go and lift a finger. In fact, what you did is you started putting burdens and or stumbling blocks in front of the rest of the people. That's why you guys are mystery Babylon. You're not putting your li listening ears on, and don't go to the right. But they did. Don't go to the left, which is the Christian Church. Don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Don't go to the left. But they, they're too proud. They don't have to listen. They think they figured it all out. They didn't. They went and did exactly what the prophecy says. And then they smite their fellow servants. Just following right into the prophecy. They're too stupid, actually, to understand what the drunkenness of Ephraim is. Why? Because of their pride. Pride is the drunkenness. Have you ever tried to... Tr Talk to a drunk? All you have to do is go talk to an American. Their pride, just you can't get you can't get through to them because they're drunk. That's why. That's what God hates. Did you ever see in the Bible anywhere he says that he loves pride? No, that's the devil. The pride is the devil. Of your father, the devil. Pride is the fall. Pride comes before destruction. And the sign is the homosexuality going on everywhere. The sodomy. So when you see that happen, you know that this, the, the end has come. But there was one knucklehead saying that, that you know, you guys, th th there is no sign. You know what it said when it says there will be no sign given? 
it means that you won't receive it. You won't, you will not take the signs. He calls us hypocrites if we don't, if we can tell that it's going to rain tomorrow, but you can't tell the times that you live in. You're a hypocrite. Okay, the hypocrites go where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, right? So if you can tell where, the only way you're going to tell is to understand the law and the prophets. All the law and the prophets hang on that commandment and the others just like it, right? Now go warn the people. But a prideful people can't do that. There's one guy. I mean, he was he was following for, you know, I, I think about three years. And such a slow belly because he kept tolerating that woman, Jezebel. He just can't let it go. The, the, to, the toleration of the woman, Jezebel, is it, that spirit of Jezebel comes from doing idolatry, worshiping Baal. Now, these guys, when it talks about Revelation chapter 2, is the guys that suffer that woman Jezebel, they still tolerate her doctrine, the mushy-gushy stuff, you know? Elijah, don't be rebuking me, I'm Jezebel. Yeah, sharply rebuke the fables. You're told to do that. Because, like I was saying earlier, for such a long time, nobody's been doing that, especially Judah was the king of Judah. They wouldn't listen to their king and go and find the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Well, do you know how much prophecy is against this for them doing this? Not just them, but even the pastors in the churches. It's everywhere. Even the evil servants. Evil servants. I've done the video about this. <coughs> Ezekiel 34. That's how they return to the drunkards. That's how they return to the drunkards. They become just like the rabbis and the pastors that won't do this. You go to the Jewish synagogues today, the Messianic ones, and they'll tell you straight up there's no such thing as the northern kingdom. Straight up. Shamelessly. They don't understand prophecy. Therefore, you know they do not love God. With all their heart, soul, and mind. They've made up their traditions of men. That's why our Messiah warned us of this. Christian church. Look at what they're doing. Oh, it's okay. We can do all this pagan witchcraft in the church. We've made it. We've whitewashed it now. We cleaned it all up now. We're okay. That's how, that's how come. You cannot, the, when you talk to these Christians and you try to warn them about this, they'll just say what? Oh, I'm saved by grace. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. What did Yeshua say is going to happen to those who blaspheme against the Holy Spirit? Will not be forgotten. That's why we, Yeshua is talking about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. He's quoting Jeremiah 23. In the latter days, you will consider this perfectly. And God says, like, through Jeremiah, like six, seven times, quit saying it's the Lord's burden. That's what they're doing. Oh, we're saved by grace. It's the Lord's burden. There's a reason why Yeshua and, and the apostles were always quoting the Old Testament. But who's, who's plugging their ears to this? Mystery Babylon. They're plugging their ears to everything that the Bible, the New Testament is quoting in the Old Testament. Some of these knuckleheads are gone so far to say that even that Paul is a false prophet or a false apostle because they have no clue what he's talking about in the Torah and the prophets. That's these people who are doing the feasts and all that stuff. They're, they're, they end up denying even their Lord, a lot of them, just like Peter said, you know, there's a, there's a big message to those guys, you know, already, it's already written even in the new Testament that they're going to do this. You see, that's how, that's, that's how intricate the word of God is. You can see everybody. When you know what the word of God is saying, it's like looking at a newspaper taking place right in front of your face. You know, then and then you talk to people. I, I talk to people even in my own area, right? My own home. They can't even see what's going on right in front of their face. They're fulfilling the prophecies as well. Like put it this way, Micah chapter seven got fulfilled in my house this past couple weeks. You see? Just tells me even more. We're getting closer, getting closer to the end. So, I'm going to be, I want you guys, if you want to learn, I hope you do, all 16 of you, go and read 1 Peter 
and understand what it's quoting. It's all about Mystery Babylon. And even in the last, you know what, I'll read you that part, just this one part. And this is what happens, the Holy Spirit, when he, when he told you he's going to raise up watchmen. So I'll tell you, I'm going to test. This is what happens to me over here. He puts things on my heart and he puts them on heavy. This is 1 Peter. The church that is at Babylon, elected, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus, my son. That's how it pretty much finishes off. That's the second last verse right there. What's Peter doing talking to Babylon? Why was he feeding the sheep, feeding the sheep, feeding the lambs? You know? Because the second sheepfold has to rise up in the last days, and it's you people. you got to listen to God, you guys. Come out of her, my people. Revelation 17 and 18. Please go read that. Take a, get your pen out and write this down. You need to study the context of Isaiah 47 and 48, warning Judah specifically warning in the waters of Judah, okay? When you get to Revelation 17 and 18, it's a repeat in history, but now it's telling you not only the great whore, but her many, many daughters, okay? That means that when you, when you put it in context to what Yeshua was saying in, say, Matthew 24, or what Paul is saying about the strong delusion, the whole world is deceived except for the very elect. You got to go and learn who the elect are. Go read Isaiah all about the elect as well. What are they going to be? Jacob, my servant, Israel, my elect. When you, you got to study <coughs> about Ephraim, you got to study about what happened to the northern kingdom. You got to put into context that in the country that you live in, there is a lot more people in the rest of the world that are going to fill the seats out of the great fall of that house, just like Yeshua said. They say, oh, the United States of America isn't in the Bible. It most certainly is. It most certainly is. The great whore and her many daughters. People don't look at the spiritual context. See, there's some guys out there that think it's Jerusalem. Why would they think that? Because they're not understanding that Jerusalem... New Jerusalem, the people of New Jerusalem are the people that are going to come out of her. Come out of her, my people. That's why it's talking like that. That's why it calls it Sodom. That's why it calls it Egypt. That's why it calls it Babylon. That's why it calls it Esau. All those different groups of people mingled together. Do you know how, how, how many different kinds of people are in the United States of America? It's a melting pot. That's a clue. Ding! Light bulb's supposed to go on. The spiritual context. The Canaanites are in there. The spiritual Canaanites. They act just like the Bible tells you. The Bible tells you how everybody's going to behave. See, when God says he's slow to anger, don't take his anger in, in vain. Like, it's coming. The Those who are not appointed to wrath are who? Jacob, my servant, Israel, my elect. <coughs> and the Gentiles that join to these people will come after. When that second exodus takes place, what did Yeshua say to the servants? Now go and bring all these people and fill up the, the feast, my, my wedding. Fill the people up, all the chairs, which Mystery Babylon didn't want to sit in. <coughs> That's why he raises up watchmen to warn. And that's why they will not listen. Why? Because of pride. That's not going to happen to us. We're the best in the world. Yep. You see? Tell me if you, if you cannot comprehend that that's the way that group of people acts. Just look at your Christian church. Go tell your Christian church. Go do what you're supposed to do and fulfill the royal law and warn them. And people don't understand God's ways, do they? He told us to warn people instead of stoning them. So all of us are these great wicked sinners. And because of the spirit of grace, which is conviction, he's chosen to pull some of you guys out of this if you overcome. What's overcoming? Watch ye therefore. And what I, 
What I command the porter, I command all. Watch. Then those are the wise servants that get the meat in due season. The evil servants, you can tell them right away. Uh, well, right away what happens is they'll start to smite and slander and do all the things the Bible says because they can't, they don't have um, the discernment and wisdom to even understand. So inside them, actually, there's, they're, 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 they're freaking out because they couldn't ever get it. There's guys that don't know the day dawning in their heart. They don't understand the key of David. And instead of shutting their mouth because they can't under, part of me can't understand it, they go and fulfill a prophecy against themselves and they start to take it away from people and those, those people's names even get blotted out of the book of life. Why? Because they weren't willing to show them the truth. They wanted to go about, they're appointed for this. They were predestined, it tells you in Peter as well. They are already ordained for this because they wouldn't listen. That's, that's how serious the word of God is. It happens right in front of your face, these people. You're, you're trying to teach them to get to work and do these things, sharply rebuking the wickedness out of these wicked pastors, wicked rabbis, filled with pride. Filled with pride. Pride is one ugly pig. No matter how much lipstick you put on it, it's still a pig. And way more in God's eyes than in my eyes. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. And that's how come everybody goes apostate because of this pride. Full-blown, full-blown pride. Fullness of bread. And then it goes to their head. That's why you warn. That's why, okay, do you really think that God isn't going to warn Mystery Babylon when it's right there in your Bible? Come out of her, my people. So his people are mixed with Babylon. It tells you this in the scriptures. Zion and, and New Jerusalem is mixed with Babylon. So come out of her, my people. Who, who's that? Well, where does it start? Ephraim's my firstborn. That's just one, one little clue right there. So Mystery Babylon is where Ephraim is. Who's Ephraim? The most powerful nation, a multitude of different nations within a nation. What happened to Joseph? He was thrown into a pit. What was saved? The multicolored coat. A multitude of nations within a nation. Who? Jake, Jacob gave that coat. It's all about Jacob. Who's Jacob? My servant. And the lost sheep are going to, here's the thing, the lost sheep, God has already ordained who they are. That's why it says, I, I would that you were hot or cold. So the cold means they didn't know any better. Why didn't they know any better? Because the lukewarm are going to take the fall for the lost sheep because the lukewarm didn't do the work. That's why. The lukewarm are going into tribulation. And some of these guys, I mean, I don't know how long I've been warning people about, about repentance, but they just, I've watched it myself. Like I'm talking like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of hours watching people, warning them every single day since two, since the, I don't know, was it since 2018? I've been warning people. Maybe 2017, I can't remember. Either the end of, it was the end of 2017 or the end of 2018. So I've, I've witnessed this. I didn't take one single day off. I warn, I warn, I warn, or I'm on the phone or I'm doing all day. Either reading my Bible, listening to my Bible, meditating upon my Bible, calling people, warning people, making videos, putting things together. That's what everybody's supposed to be doing. That's what it means to watch. You're watching for his people. You're trying to help them out. And it's a sharp rebuke because the wickedness of these people thinks that, oh, God's, God's, God's going to save my kids. And meanwhile, you're tolerating your Jezebel wife. I won't toler tolerate that. As an example, not to rule over you, but to be an example unto you. That's why you do it. Because you follow what God says. And if the world did that, we wouldn't be in this problem. So the severity, remember the severity came to the northern kingdom of Israel. If you don't know this, that's what he's talking about in Romans 11. And then he says, but if the Gentiles go and do the same bonehead move that the northern kingdom did, 
and they refused to hear his testimony, which is the spirit of prophecy. They wouldn't listen. He warned them in Leviticus uh, 26 that you're going to get cast to the four corners of the earth and the Gentiles are going to devour you and yada, yada, yada. And they, Israel, the northern kingdom, would not pay attention to the testimonies of God. And he did exactly what he said he was going to do. <coughs> Romans 11 is Paul telling the Christian church that that's what's going to happen to you if you do Christmas and Easter. Or if you bow down to a wall. Praying to a wall. Stupid. The high places of, of, of Judah, they're worshipping the city. The high places of Samaria, the Asheroth pole. Micah, chapter 1, verse 5. If you have any discernment, and then pride overcomes that man. That I'm telling you, like the people mess around. They deny the power of the Holy Spirit. So what is God? Like God's sitting there just shaking his head at us. It's his spirit that speaks through men or it's the devil's spirit, the antichrist spirit of error. And God has the power to give you either or. So where is your heart? Do you fear and tremble at his word? Or do you only, the great transgression against the servants is presumptuousness. That's the great transgression. And because they stopped their ears from hearing, they would never... The reason why, why pride remains in people, covetousness. There's 10 commandments. You know? How about if you knew that there's preachers out there that don't even keep the Sabbath holy, but they sit there and pretend that they do? They really don't. Because they're a point, they, they're going to be smooth, ear tickling, words are going to come out of their mouth and they cause divisions. And the silly women follow after them. Because why? Because they're so nice. Well, that's, that's the whole problem, right? Women don't like hearing the destructions coming. It makes them scared. That's why I go read 1 Peter 3. If you're afraid, you ain't. You ain't listening to 1 Peter 3. And 1 Peter 3 is talking to the elect. The elect women. So if you're afraid and you need to go listen to some smoothier tickling guy, you are not the elect. Read it yourself. I'll be reading it very soon. It's not just to the women. These wicked men with the malice and the envy and the strife and all that nonsense, the rioting, the drunkenness, the pride... Peter's warning, the lost sheep. So let's look at it this way. America, besides the lost sheep of the house of Israel that are in America, you're doomed. You're going to hell because you're in the Bible. And God's word will not come back vain. And he warned you for 2,000 years it was coming. And because you won't listen... Your punishment's coming because you destroyed his word and you spread your lies to the four corners of the earth rather than the gospel. And that's what your Bible says. And there's not a thing you can do about it. And then you're going to learn the really hard way that you don't mess with God. And you're going to learn the hard way what his word says is true. And he's going to manifest all of you. All of you. You'll be manifested for every, 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 as a spectacle, the great sacrifice. But he's going to do it to you to save other people in the world that will listen to his word, who never heard the fame of him because America spread pagan witchcraft to the four corners of the earth, using God's word to do it. And Judah, you let it happen. You helped it. You're responsible. The Chaldeans. See, 544. Babylon, what happened in the old time, back when Judah went into captivity for a time period, right? And they loved Babylon so much that only a small little group came and rebuilt Jerusalem. It's kind of the same thing. Judah today loves America so much. They've created it the way it is and they're in charge of it. 
So they've created this beast, this great whore, and they love it so much. They, they don't even want to go back to Jerusalem. <clears throat> That's why Habakkuk was written long ago. Woe to you. And though it be told you, you still will not believe. I will do a work in your day. And though it be told you, you still will not believe. And guess who, guess who warned the synagogue about that? Paul did. Acts 13. You see? Like you, when you have the Holy Spirit of truth, you notice all these things. My brothers notice this stuff. The evil servants used to have the Holy Spirit and used to notice things too. Then they start to deny it. They deny the power of the Holy Spirit. They deny that the Holy Spirit showed them this or that or whatever. Well, we already took those talents from them anyway. Now they're empty. They got nothing. Nothing but envy, strife, malice. They're drunk with their pride again. They went back to the ways. And I warn you this right now. I'll tell you why I warn you too. Because a bunch of you are going to be 11th hour harvest workers and you take their crowns. Because they were too wicked to get to work and do the job. They were given all this beautiful stuff. Look at what it says about Ephraim. I'm going to read it again because it's so easy for me to see and I want you guys to see it too. And I, I just ex try to explain it so you... If you can look out your kitchen window and, and see that they're doing exactly what our Father in Heaven told us so many years ago in Hosea. Hosea is all about this. Where, where Ephraim and Judah dwell together. In Amos, it's called Joseph. It's referred to as, or yeah, Joseph. So understand, like, each different prophet refers to things in different ways. And you're supposed to connect the dots. And that's how he preserved his words, by the way. He preserved his word that way so that um, so that we could, could hear it and nobody could mess around with it because they don't know what to change. Because Ephraim has made many altars to sin, okay? So that means they did all that pagan witchcraft, right? That's what it means, okay? So that, I mean, if you read the beginning of the, of the book, you'll see all this stuff, right? Then there's this transition spot. Because Ephraim has made many altars to sin, altars shall be unto him to sin. So all they did was they transferred their, their idolatry to Christmas and Easter, and then they started doing the feasts when they're not ordained and not allowed to do them. And it explains it in this little bit. And, and they don't hear. I have written to him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. They won't listen to this. And it goes to the uh, both sides, to the right and to the left. Both sides. So the, some of them are still doing the Christmas and Easter, and others are starting to do the feasts. How do you know that, Mark? Because of the next verse. They sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of my offerings. You see? They're his offerings. And they eat it. They do the Passover. They eat it. But the Lord accepts them not. Now will he remember their iniquity and visit their sins. They shall return to Egypt. What does that mean? They're going into captivity. Those who lead into captivity are going into captivity. That's what these dudes are doing. And the silly women. And, that, and, the, and you look at those women... I'll tell you right now, just give you a, a word of advice or word of mention. These women have no problem speaking reproachfully. And they're given up to Satan. Just like when you listen to Paul, read First and Second Timothy. They have no problem opening up that big pie hole and speaking reproachfully. And they're given up to Satan. God does not mess around with this stuff. For Israel has forgotten his maker and built his temples and Judah hath multiplied fenced cities, but I will send a fire upon his cities <clears throat> and it shall devour the places thereof where Judah and Ephraim dwell together. That's why it's important to understand this great thing that Yeshua told us to go learn what this means. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as the morning cloud 
and as the early dew, it goes away. Therefore I have hewn them by the prophets, and I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are as a light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy, and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they like men have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. So go, go look at the, the treacherous dealer deals treacherously. Go look into these things, what they mean. And the part where it says the knowledge of God, this is why you want the heart of David. This is why it's called the key of David even. And Yeshua quotes this a second time, bringing to your attention to have the knowledge of God. Well, Ephraim looks at the great things of his law as a strange thing. I have written him the great things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. So what ends up happening, and this is no word of a lie, whether you heard it or not in other videos, there are certain knuckleheads that I know. They were, they were told many times to get to work. Some of them did, some of them didn't. But the ones right now are so inspired to speak against the key of David, for instance, that they're fulfilling the worst prophecy that they could ever, ever, ever do. And it says that their names will even get blotted out of the book of life. You know why this is going on? They wouldn't feed the sheep. They're tolerating Jezebel. They think they're rich and they're wretched and poor and naked. How come they're naked? They don't have the key of David. And they used to. That's the worst part, you guys. If you don't understand the key of David, it's, that's better for you. But if you do understand the key of David and then you go trample on it and you toss your crown into the dung pile like they, these guys did, watch out because they fulfilled a pro the most wicked thing that they could have ever done because they're robbing you of what God's promises are. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, blessed are those that do, right? Blessed, it's talking about the servants, okay? The servants are the only ones that are going to understand this book. And they understand it to save the other people. Okay? That's the point. So they give warning. They're warning Mystery Babylon. This book is talking about Mystery Babylon. So what about the rest of the world? That's what happens during the second exodus. That's why there's a certain point where no man is going to be willing to repent anymore. But the whole second exodus gets filled with people who are, never heard the word of God because of wicked, wicked mystery Babylon. They completely perverted the words of God. But look at this. These, this is the servants. And many are called to be servants and only few choose. It's the first fruits. That's why it's blessed are you who overcome. Endure to the end. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. And that's what they do. You, I see it. I mean, I witness it. Other people witness it. It's a terrible thing to do. Can you imagine? Like what it would be so to, that you knew, you knew things, many things in the word of God. And then you had the audacity because of your pride to go and preach against the things that are written in this book only because you wouldn't do it or you would misuse it and abuse it, speaking evil against the servants because you don't like the words that come out of their mouth because you're too much of a coward to do it yourself, sharply rebuking the fables out of these wicked pastors and wicked rabbis and wicked servants that will not do the work who do not care, who lie to the people, saying there's not two houses of Israel, casting stumbling blocks in front of people, quickly write a check for half and you can't understand that because you don't know the, the great things of God's law. You can't understand Deuteronomy 12 and 16 because you only got so far and you think that you're made in the shade so you only preach what you can understand. There's some people out there, I watched them for like four, four or five years ago, preaching, just nonsense. So God told me to go after one of these guys. And it's his, his, his sermons were just garbage, just nonsense. Just smooth ear tickling words of nothingness. And he's right back doing that again. And the stupid women lap it up. So it has no clue about prophecy whatsoever. In fact, he actually fulfilled this right here. 
He, pre he preaches against the key of David. He used to have it. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. They take away from you these things. These are the ones that will tolerate Jezebel. These are the ones that are lukewarm. Now, they'll make, again, they'll make that about money. It really isn't. Because the seven, the seven angels to the seven churches of Turkey, that's where they're all located, is where the northern kingdom was dispersed to. It's a sign and a, 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 um, an example for those who have ears to hear. It's talking about the northern kingdom. Why do you know that? Because the whole world is deceived except for the very elect. So we're the only ones that are going to go out there and warn the Christian church to repent. Well, why do we do that? Because we know what prophecy says and we know that God's people are scattered all over the place. We need to find them and the way, through the foolishness of preaching and the only people who are willing to do the work are the only ones that are the wise servants. Those evil servants are just going to go back to the drunkards of Ephraim. And these, the drunkards of Ephraim are so stupid, they created the prohibition because of their pride. And it was really always talking about their pride. And that's their holier-than-thou attitude on their own righteousness. Dumb. Dumber than a sack of hammers. That's what they did. Because they, could, they never had the discernment. They, too, went to the letter of the law. You see? New Jerusalem... The, the children of Hagar will not reign with the children of New Jerusalem. They will not reign together. I don't know what else I can say. I, didn't, I wasn't planning on reading much of the Bible or anything like that because when I do do it, it's probably going to put a lot of people on their butt or better put them on their hands and knees because First Peter is like, it's like, there's so much he's quoting in Isaiah even. And what is he quoting in Isaiah? Like it's so crazy what Peter is really saying in there. Some of the details in there. But you have to read the Old Testament stuff. So I'm going to be end, end up going to be reading um, Nahum, the, the last chapter of Nahum. Uh, the last two chapters of uh, Hosea. And it's talking about the punishment of Ephraim. After, once the tribulation already starts, is the context. First Peter, Isaiah 20, back to Isaiah 28 again. Like you guys, Isaiah 28 is all about the sixth seal. And we'll read the sixth seal probably. And whatever else, I, I, just, I just need to get it all organized together. And it's not pleasant to me. I don't like it. It's bitter in my belly. It's the reason why the watchman eats the little roll. That's revelation. Okay. The little roll is revelation, but it's mentioned all the way back in Ezekiel two and three about the watchman. Okay. What it's warning, lamentation, and woe. It's for your sake. These people they're when they're out there doing the feasts and having a gay old time, there is no lamentation in their heart. They don't tremble at God's word. They're putting stumbling blocks. You see this? That's why Hosea 13 and 14 is written. So you, you don't become like that. And P Peter is talking about all this stuff in 1 Peter. And guess who is warning? To the elect in Babylon. To the elect in Babylon. What makes you elect? Ears to hear makes you elect. And if you hear, you do. So you have to hear what you're supposed to do in order to do what you're supposed to do. And I'll tell you straight up, is to become a watchman. You need to warn the people. And if you don't, you're going into captivity. And if you decide to be the, the, the worst of the two groups, there's those who fight with the sword and die with the sword. Those are the guys that are going to speak evil against the government when they are ordained for your punishment. But to us, it's not a terror because we, we, we know what Amos 5 is talking about. We know what Romans 13 is talking about. We know what Jude is talking about. We know what First and Second Peter is talking about. That's why we warn people. Shut your mouth against the government. They are only ordained to, to punish the people 
um, that are rejecting the word of God in his church. And judgment comes to the church first. Get that in your head. Great is the fall of that house, right? That's what Yeshua told you. The flood comes. That's the sixth seal. The flood comes. The house crashes because they didn't build them on the rock. That's including Judah. They're filled with covetousness. They, they're doing the Sabbath Babylonian style. Okay? Come out of her, my people. They don't want to do it. And, they, and the knuckleheads that even know that the day begins at dawn won't even warn the people in, in Judah. Why? Because they're cowards. That's why. There's no guile on the first fruit's mouth. And these guys speak against against those who are rebuking in the gate, just like your Bible says. They hate those who rebuke in the gate. Those who are in the gate, the door that no man can shut. And then so they speak evil against the key of David. Unbelievable. <sighs> I don't know. I hope you're catching on to the things that I'm indicating to you. I hope you already know what the Bible says about these things, and this encourages you. You see, to the lost sheep, the words that come out of my mouth are going to be encouraging. You know why? Because they understand. To those who are appointed for destruction, you're going to hate me. And that's fine with me because I'm okay with the word of God. I'm okay with it because God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and give us the key of David so that we're not in temptation and deliver us from the evil one. The hour of temptation. You know, it, you do well to listen to God. That's the choice I made. I listen to God. I don't sit there. I'm not swayed by the proselytes of Judah. I'm not swayed by the proselytes of the Christian church. Twice the children of hell. I'm not swayed by that. I much rather know what God's word says. I listen to him. Every day he brings new things to my attention. And I'm not selfish. I give it to you. These other wicked guys, I know them personally, a lot of them. They're sitting there making what, what was like pulling teeth, some of these guys, trying to get them to even make a video of repentance. And they'll have no problem now going and making videos against everything that they, the Bible says now. That's how stupid they are. They pulled a Jay Breezy. Some of these guys were worried about becoming Jay Breezy when they saw it happen. They did it anyway. Like, it, like Jay Breezy was a perfect example of, of what not to do. And that's what he did. And everybody saw it. A lot of these people saw it. And boom. They're still doing the same thing. They still do the same thing. It was all written in the Bible that that was going to happen. I, I mean, even back in those days, I knew that. I, like, I knew it. It was shocking to me. D don't think I didn't get shocked by it. But it was part of my, like the meet and do season. I had to like, you know, it stopped me in my tracks. Tears came down my eyes, by the way. I didn't. It wasn't pleasant. I don't want to see no man fall. But you see what happens to these guys? These wicked people have no problem bringing you down with them. I'll tell you that straight up. There's guys, they preach smooth ear tickling words to you, causing divisions though. They're not serving their Lord Yeshua and they only mislead the simple. So simpletons, okay? Laden with, women laden with sins, okay? That's the who they deceive. So, all you have to do, remember I was telling you about those people that aren't worthy to be appointed to do the job for the boss, but they'll still take the job anyways? Those simple people like that. Because all they care about is themselves. Because they want the ear tickling smooth words. That's why. And they're the ones that cause divisions. And it says to mark them, have nothing to do with them. And they've, I've watched some of these guys that even lead other men. But they're just like silly women, those men. That's what pride, that's why pride is such a wicked, wicked thing. Pride is a wicked thing. It's the destruction of many. It's more, it'll be more tolerable for, for Sodom and Gomorrah, what they went through, than what's happening, what's going to happen to this great city. 
And by the way, this great city is just an idiom because there's many cities in this great city called Mystery Babylon. You can get that in Jeremiah chapter 50. There's many cities. It, that's why people will think it's just one, one particular city is Mystery Babylon. No. No. Many daughters. <coughs> many daughters. M many cities in this one great city. Because it represents the, the nastiness of ancient Babylon. But it's Sodom, Gomorrah. You know, I mean that your sign, it's like when, when Yeshua uses Sodom and Gomorrah as a sign of the end, you know, and the same as Noah, right? It's going to be the same as in the days of Noah. Noah's warning the people to repent. They're stupid. So they didn't listen. Stupid with pride. Pride makes people stupid. You understand that, I hope, you know, <clears throat> I'm speaking from a biblical perspective. So if you love the ways of this world, you know, then you're at enmity with God. Come out of her, my people, is what the warning is. Well, you think, because things are just going to keep going on and on and on the way it is, right? Nothing will change. How could, oh, I, we don't see anything going on right now. Everything looks good outside. Really? Yeah. Woe is me, for I am when they have gathered the summer fruits as the grape gleanings of the vintage there is no cluster to eat, and my, dissolved, my soul desired the first ripe fruit, first fruits. Woe is me. The good man is perished out of the earth, and there is none upright among men. They all lie and wait for blood. They hunt every man his brother with a net, that they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh, and the judge asketh for reward, and the great man he uttereth his mischievous desire, so they wrap it up. The best of them is a briar, and the most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge. The day of thy watchman and thy visitation comes, now shall be their perplexity. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide, and keep the doors of your mouth from her that lays in your bosom. For the son dishonors the father, and the daughter rises up against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Therefore I will look unto the Lord, and I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. So, why woe to me. This is talking about when they're already in tribulation. They screwed up. That's how they're going to be redeemed only. So what they wouldn't do right now, they will have to do later. But you know where it says in Ezekiel 14, where though Daniel, Noah, and was it Daniel, Noah, and Job, although they lived in it, although they were there, they'll only save themselves. It's speaking of once the tribulation begins. Because when you understand the servants, even their, even their children are going to be, you know, glorying because of who their parents were. Read Isaiah 64, 65, 66. That's why in Ezekiel 34, the evil servants, it will be required, required of them. It will be required of them. And God's still going to go find his sheep at the sixth seal. So I would that you were hot like the watchman, or cold like the ignorant, but because you're lukewarm and you knew this stuff, you knew the latter works, but you still tolerated the spirit of Jezebel. Smooth things. Prophesy to us deceits. That's the problem. Because the dummies can't get it. You know why these men are like that? Because they're worshiping the vagina. That's why. 
They're not being men. They're cowards. They're cowards. That's part of it. Their lust. They're making a light thing. They don't get it. They don't get it. You know, I, I want everybody in the world to just repent so that they don't have to suffer. It's the same way God is too. I would that all, that's why he was long suffering, that all men would come to repentance. He doesn't want you to destroy you guys, but he has no choice because he's not a liar. He's not a liar like us. So you need his spirit of grace and truth to cleanse you from your unrighteousness. You need to walk in his ways. You're never going to get there if you don't do that. If you're not convicted, you've already quenched the spirit. You've, you've already put the, the flame out, you know? You want to continue. It's a, it's a race. Finish the good race to receive the crown, right? And the crown. The crown's the key of David, honestly. The, who, who is the first fruits? Those who have the key of David. That's why you offer it to other people. These wicked guys who speak smooth words to their little cult. That's what they're the ones that they claim that I run a cult. That's how stupid they are. I use the prophecies all the time. They deny prophecies. The same people that say that I run a cult can't understand a word of prophecy. Dumber than a sack of hammers. Tolerating the woman Jezebel. Some of these knuckleheads that are teaching the Torah are still letting their, their wives do Christmas for crying out loud. Some of these guys teaching you the Torah are breaking the Sabbath all the time. Willfully. It's no big deal. And they cause divisions. That's your big sign right there. <coughs> Slanderous. Another sign of who they are is they're going to do the feasts. They're going to they're going to preach for them. That's a sign. Some people don't know this yet. You know? That means the unjust steward is going to pull the brakes and say, "Whoa, wait a minute. What is this guy talking about? I need to go and learn this." Did he do a video about this? Yeah, I did a bunch of them a couple weeks, a few weeks or a month ago. Go watch that stuff. Go watch the, the video to Jim Staley, but go read the Bible about it. Don't trust me. Go read the Bible about it because we're doing that which is holy in a profane land, on a profane calendar, and he told us to worship in truth. So what he did is he wrote this great thing in his law, but Ephraim counted it as a strange thing, and he says, wait to do the feasts. I'll let you do them when I give you your license back again. And the people can't hear that. So they go and do that, which is, that's why altars are going to be to, for, for Ephraim to sin. And they do his offerings. And that's when he's going to remember their iniquity. And that's when they get the punishment. That's when they go into the, into the captivity. That's when they fight with the sword. That's when the women are going to go into a bed of suffering. Jezebel's going into a bed of suffering. And everybody who tolerates Jezebel. Those who are, think they're rich. So that's the arrogance, okay? They think they're rich because of their pride, right? They're not hot and they're not cold. They're right in the middle and they think that they're rich. And they're wretched, miserable, poor. They're naked. They're going into, into captivity. And then he says, I counsel you to, to buy me, buy of me the gold tried in the fire because they're going to the furnace of affliction. They're going into tribulation. So at that point in time, that warning was to them, once they go into tribulation, they're that's how they're going to learn. Not all of them are going to repent, but they should have listened before. That's why they're going to be sitting there. What they, This is their punishment. Because they didn't lament before it happened, they're going to lament through it happening. Okay? Then the, then the seriousness is going to kick in. It'll be worse than, than uh, the Holocaust. That's when they're going to realize. And the reason why they will too, we have an indicator of this, is because God is going to pour a spirit of, what is it called? Of um, chastisement. 
I was teaching about chastisement on a Sabbath gathering last year, and this one idiot completely doesn't doesn't like hearing that at all. It's actually a few idiots, and they t speak evil against it. Even I get chastised all the time. You know, there's bad things always happening to me. You know, <clears throat> and they bring you closer to God. It doesn't feel good, but it brings you closer to God. And people don't want to hear that because they're stupid. They're prideful. That's why. If that infuriates them, then wait till the tribulation comes. And it's actually one of these men is the same, is one of the same men that actually tolerates the spirit Jezebel. I, I mean, I've been witnessing it for a long time. And you're patient and you're, oh, you know, she's coming around, she's coming around, she's coming, you know, yeah. He, has, he doesn't have the, the, the man bits to stand up to his own wife and say, no, this is the way it is in my house. Me and my house follow the Lord. I'll tell you straight up right now. Here's, a, here's an indicator right now. Continue reading Micah chapter 7. But my better half is walking out the door on me as well because, because she thinks I'm a lunatic, always in love with this Bible all the time, warning the people. And she doesn't want to hear it because she's scared. So uh, uh, my whole family's getting broken up because of the word of God. Well, who am I going to choose? By example, I'm going to tell you this. I'm choosing God. Choosing God. I'm not choosing the wickedness of my wife who's walking out with my child never to be seen again. Because unless you are, less God is more important, less Yeshua is more important than anybody, than anybody, anything, you're not even worthy to be his disciple. And everybody doesn't care about it, other people. And then they're going to know there was a prophet in their midst. That's not talking about some guy that can foretell the future on his own power or something like that. Or God's sitting there saying, hey, Mark, you know, this is the date that it's going to happen. No, it's already written in the book. And you get revealed. Your eyes get opened. Things that you don't understand right now, you will later on. That's exactly the way it works. You just keep reading it. And you keep doing your job. You keep learning off of those who are telling the truth. And the Holy Spirit will enter into you. It happens so many times to men. They fall though. They fall because once they realize or start to see what it says, they won't do it. That's the problem. That's why the 11th hour harvest workers are so important. The last will be first and the first will be last. That's why. It's a prophecy because of their envy. Because they're envious. And they wouldn't, and once you're envious, that's what happens. The Holy Spirit withdraws from you. Yep. You know, they want things, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's insubordination. It's rebellion. They, they, they can't get that out because of covetousness. It's always covetousness. That's what the word says all the time. That's the parable of the seed sower, right? I, it, it's end days prophecy. The devil sowed in the tares too, by the way. Yeah. So the tares and the wheat are going to grow together till the harvest. So get used to it, the tares. The tares aren't going to produce any fruit. Well, the fruit, what's the fruit? The fruit is the knowledge of God, understanding prophecy, and warning the people. Hey, it. That's, I mean, you're not going to change the word of God. So some of you are tares. And you get burnt. And the reason is, is because you're wicked heart. Because you won't listen to the full instruction of God. That's why there's such thing as Mystery Babylon. And of course, is Mystery Babylon going to think they're Mystery Babylon? No, because they're too prideful to see. Rose-colored glasses. The Jezebel spirit. That's why. They don't like to be told these things. That's why. 